people have asked me uh, what my interests were as a young person. I have always had a feeling uh, for space and I've always felt that we're not alone, that uh, we uh, have people similar to ourselves in space. Mr Norris, you claim to have conclusive evidence of the existence of flying saucers. Uh, what is this evidence? Well, uh, some of the craft have dropped uh, metal objects from them. Uh, others have uh, dropped a frothy sort of substance which they call angel hair. This is quite a common thing. A silicon type of uh, material has come away from them. We've had the uh, very froth sort of stuff uh, analysed here in Adelaide and nobody could uh, tell us what they were. Now you're an ex-aircrew um, uh, member of the Second World War and I dare say that during your period of service you would have seen a number of strange phenomena flying about. I did see my uh, first uh, object in 1942 in Jolton in Western Australia. In 1942 I had a quite a an experience with a sighting of a UFO and um, I was out on the tarmac uh, and it was about, it was after eight o'clock and uh, the night was quite dark. I saw, looked up and saw this thing which was, uh, it was spherical, and around the edge of it, it had a purple hue. It was coming, obviously high up, but it appeared to be coming also at, at me. Sounds a little strange to explain that, but, uh, it, it was obvious to me uh, coming towards me and I thought well what's that and um, you know 1942 the uh, UFO phenomena was very rarely talked about. to convince the people that UFOs are for real and uh, the word uh, UFO means extraterrestrial craft and from my point of view but uh, the reason why we say uh, this is a season it's not the UFOs have been coming here all along but uh, people are outside more in the summer and they and so you expect to see more during the summer well I have to get more reports anyway in the early days when uh, a lot of my friends uh, school friends and that knew dad was the UFO man uh, or the fly in those days are actually addressed more as flying saucer so he was really addressed more as the flying saucer man and of course that has all sorts of connotations so uh, that kids at school would take the mickey out of me and that and uh, of course at first I probably used to get a little bit uh, feel awkward about the whole situation and I think that's only natural when you're a young kid because they're directing stuff at you which is not really you. Have you ever been called an eccentric or indeed a crackpot? for holding these views? I certainly have. And in the early stages, uh, we were certainly called people who were sort of not all there. You know, as I often say to a lot of people, if you understood the facts, you wouldn't be so blasé about the whole thing. And that's really the crux of it. If you understand the facts, um, you can't be that blasé. I came out this morning to get the paper, and as I walked back, I noticed a circle on the lawn, and uh, I was quite intrigued. I called my wife out, and... Uh, She's got no explanation for it. Uh, as you can see, the grass has got the, uh, a circle around there and uh, it's actually dying off. It's, uh, and it wasn't like this yesterday morning because I had the sprinkler going on it. There has been some <coughs> suggestion that it could have been caused by a flying saucer. What do you say about that? I don't believe in flying saucers, but I've got no explanation for it. Uh, so I took a chance and rang uh, Colin Norris uh, this morning. He seemed quite interested when I described it to him and... Uh, I've got no explanation whatsoever for it. The markings on the ground, uh, craft coming in and doing rectangular turns or right angle turns or doing spectacular things, this is what it's all about. When my father experienced the uh, sighting in, in 1942, I think it was, he set up his um, organisation where he would go out and investigate. 
UFO sightings. Basically, I guess the, the general rundown would be he would get her a phone call, and this could be at all hours of the night and morning. Um, what he would do then is get the details from the person, or he would say this requires a little bit more investigation, it was something of significance. Um, so what he would do is often go out and interview the person, he would take along a, a, a tape recorder. About 12 years ago, these people had an object sitting over a sh the shed in the back of their house, on the house property, and uh, they got in touch with me about that. This person stepped back from this pine hedge onto the lawn. How was he dressed? Um, is, is this the person that you have drawn here? Had these most beautiful gloves. I've never seen anything like it. They were black. What sort of what sort of shapes, what sort of things have you seen? Oh, well, the one up on the hill was a cigar-shaped, long cigar-shaped one. Has anyone seen these things with you? No, only the wife has seen them. Yeah. Do you believe these and, reports uh, about the copper? Oh, yeah, I don't only believe them. I, I I know that these people are telling the absolute truth because they're dignified and wonderful people. What happened again, just briefly? Uh, in 1985. We started going on the highway out of Broken Hill. Turned around and um, I went and made my bed and as I was walking to the front, uh, to the back I could hear like a whizzing, winding noise. I thought it was a, a helicopter or something. I said, Joe, I said, can you hear something like a helicopter? And um, I don't know, like a whizzing noise? You no, know, it sounds like it's getting closer and closer. Joe goes, look at my instruments, they're all, I'm doing, I'm driving the bus and I'm steering, but we were lifted off of the ground, it would be about knee high to waist high, and he, he got a bit frightened, and he goes, look outside, look and see if you can see anything like that, and I said, all I can hear is a, uh, like a helicopter noise. 